blood-boiling rivalries. It's what drives the circle of life to continue on its evolutionary path. But what if we reverse time a bit and talk about one of the most iconic animals Earth has ever produced, the T-Rex. It's undoubtedly one of the top carnivores evolution has devised. After all, it had one of the strongest bite forces in the animal kingdom. Thus, one must wonder if the tyrant lizard king could be defeated by any dinosaur that lived during its time. Well, if evolution crafted the ultimate carnivore, you bet it also made heavily armored dinosaurs to even things out. So nature decided to create a living tank, that being the Ankylosaurus. Yes, it's time to solve this debate once and for all, T-Rex versus Ankylosaurus. First, we should establish the setting. Let's assume this fight takes place on an open field, you know, to create fair fighting conditions. Also, let's assume both of these animals are enraged and willing to fight to the end. So with that being said, let's get this analysis started. Size and Physique if there was any dinosaur that struck fear with its presence, it had to be the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This behemoth got its nickname King of the Tyrant Lizards for a good reason. It was perhaps one of the largest carnivores to ever walk the face of the earth. The T-Rex lived during the late Cretaceous in North America and was pretty much the alpha of its terrain. It had a typical theropod body shape, that being powerful legs, small arms, a long tail, and a huge head. Head. Now, whether you believe the T-Rex had lips or if it had feathers, one thing is for sure, it was enormous. A typical Tyrannosaurus stood around 13 feet tall at the hips, 40 feet in length, and weighed between 7 to 9 tons. And with its large size, you bet it was very bulky. In fact, it was considered one of the most robust theropods for a good reason. It had to develop strength and power in order to hunt down its large armored prey. And while the Tyrannosaurus lineage was busy building its power, one of its rivals was busy trying to counter that, the Ankylosaurus. If there was any dinosaur that should be considered a living tank, it's definitely Definitely this one. This beast is perhaps the most popular armored dinosaur. It supported a heavily covered osteoderm defense. Bone plates and knobs were embedded into the dino skin, making it very resistant to outside forces. In addition to that, it's estimated that the Ankylo's defense went all the way up to its neck for extra protection. However, contrary to popular belief, the osteoderm armor was pretty light and flexible, with it being thin-walled and hollow on the underside. In fact, new research on the Ankylosaurus shows that the armor was actually used for mating display purposes, much like antlers on cervids. However, the armor could still obviously be used for defense against carnivores. But with that being said, this dinosaur was still a hefty individual. A typical adult Ankylosaurus is estimated to grow up to 26 feet in length and weighed between 5 to 9 tons. So when comparing it to the T-Rex, it's pretty evident that the Tyrannosaurus Tyrannosaurus has a height and length advantage. However, the Ankylo has a more compact build and a lower center of gravity. The Ankylosaurus was a broad and wide individual. Since it was close to the ground and was big bones, it would be pretty difficult to topple over. So when concerning size and physique, they both are equal in this regard. Both of these dinosaurs are in the same weight range and have unique body types that are hard to directly determine a superior physique for battle. The T-Rex supports more of an offensive build with its massive jaws being prominent. On the other hand, the Ankylosaurus has a more defensive build supported by osteoderm armor. But is reaching enormous sizes really more important than dexterity, that brings me on to my second point, which is speed and agility. Locomotion estimates are a big issue when concerning prehistoric creatures, since, you know, they're dead. But we can estimate their theoretical potential given their remains. The T-Rex's speed, for example, is hotly debated among the paleo community. Some scientists claim that it could have run up to 17 miles per hour, but other scientists say it more or less speed walked rather than ran. Now, if you think you can outrun a T-Rex, then you'd be incorrect. Recent research has shown that this brute was a great long distance runner. On top of that, the Tyrannosaurus was very nimble for its size. This was thanks due to
to its low rotational inertia, wide hips, and leg structure. As a result, the T-Rex would have been able to quickly turn and pivot its body rather easily. This attribute could prove useful when hunting bulky armored prey. The Ankylosaurus, however, well, let's just say it was not the fastest thing nature has crafted. Due to its short stocky legs and wide body frame, it couldn't really run quickly at all. Scientists estimate that it could have run up to six miles per hour. Yeah, so this dinosaur is not outrunning anything but it didn't have to due to its armored defense. So, when regarding the aspect of speed and agility, I think it's obvious that the T-Rex takes this. And sure, having an agility advantage is a nice trait, but it wouldn't really mean much if you can't inflict severe wounds to your opponents. This brings me on to my final point, which is weaponry and fighting IQ. Nature crafted the Tyrannosaurus to be the ultimate carnivorous dinosaur. It seemed to stack all its eggs into one basket, that being its bone-crunching bite. This comes to no surprise given its huge, robust skull that could have grown up to 5 feet in length. Essentially, a human would be a bite-sized snack. And with its huge jaws comes a monstrous bite force. The T-Rex is estimated to chomp down with a force of up to 12,000 PSI. Just for reference, that's around 80 times stronger than what a human can produce. The T-Rex's dentistry also helped it in causing crippling damage with each bite. Its banana-sized teeth had a very robust base and was somewhat blunt. This meant that its teeth were built for crushing and crunching rather than shearing bits of flesh. This makes sense since its prey was huge and armored, thus the need for a bone-crunching bite. And if you think its jaws were impressive, its intelligence and vision were nothing to be scoffed at either. Unlike what certain franchises say about a T-Rex's eyesight, it had great vision. Its eyes were front-facing, giving it binocular vision. In fact, a T-Rex's sight is estimated to be comparable to that of a modern-day hawk's. And one last reason as to why the T-Rex was the ultimate carnivorous theropod, it had one of the largest relative brain sizes out of any non-avian dinosaur. A mature brain of a Tyrannosaurus had around 3.3 billion corteal neurons, which is similar in density to a baboon's. This makes it evident that the T-Rex was a rather intelligent animal. Well, since nature decided to go a little overboard on the T-Rex's offensive build, let's talk about one of the few animals that kept it in check. The Ankylosaurus. It too also had all its eggs stacked in one basket, although that was defense rather than offense. A healthy adult would not be the first option the T-Rex would go after given one thing, its long tail ending in a two-foot bony club. The tail of the Ankylosaurus could have grown up to 10 feet in length and was fairly rigid. However, its range of motion was not really the best. It was able to swing at about a 100 degree lateral arc, which translates to about 50 degrees on either side of its body. But if it did land a blow, it would most certainly heavily injure the contacted area. In fact, the club tail of the Ankylosaurus could generate a force of up to 4,800 newtons per second. Just for reference, a baseball player might swing a bat at 13 newtons per second. So yeah, a full force hit by the club tail could cripple the T-Rex in just a couple of swings. However, there is one major downside to the Ankylo, which is intelligence. You see, since it was a very thick-headed dinosaur, and I mean that in the most literal sense, its brain was was underwhelmingly small. It likely did not possess the cognitive, strategic capabilities of the T-Rex because it didn't need to. Along with its heavily armored skull, its lifestyle made it such that it could survive thinking very simply. So, when considering the topic of weaponry and fighting IQ, I would say this is a tie. As I mentioned earlier, both of the builds counteract one another, with both of them possessing powerful weapons. However, the T-Rex would obviously be more intelligent. But with all that being said, it's now time to determine a verdict. All right, we have our stats. So, who would win in a fight between a T-Rex and an Ankylosaurus? This is a classic matchup and would be a very hard-fought brawl for the both of them. But, in a head-to-head -head fight scenario where both animals are determined to win, I would say the Tyrannosaurus would win with very high difficulty. 
I may have favored the Ankylosaurus a few years ago. However, given the recent research and depictions concerning the T-Rex and Ankylosaurus, I think the T-Rex got more buffed in terms of stats, while the Ankylo got somewhat nerfed. The T-Rex, along with it having a devastating bite, had a lot more intelligence. It could likely adapt and strategize to the situation better and take advantage of any vulnerabilities. As I mentioned earlier, the Ankylo's tail was not as flexible as once thought and was secluded to the back half of its body. The T-Rex could likely take advantage of that fact with its great agility and cleverness and aim its attacks more towards the head and neck region. Also, the recent estimations of the Ankylosaurus's armor being more aimed towards mating display purposes would not necessarily be an overall nerf towards its defense stats, but it would not help it either when trying to argue for its side. But to reiterate, this is a pretty even match, but I think the T-Rex would slightly edge out the Ankylosaurus more often than not in a head-to-head -head fight.